Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. We are just expecting God to move and do powerful things. Uh, I got a call very early this morning <laughs> that um, my uh, dad, he said that he just keeps coughing and he can't stop, so he doesn't want to freak anybody out. Um, uh, he, he is absolutely sure that this is allergies and the stuff that's blooming. We all know how that feels. So um, just pray for him, and um, we're just going to believe God. But, you know, he didn't want to be coughing and hacking in here and scare people. <laughs> and so um, let's just pray that the Lord will be with him. And then please just continue to pray for my mom. She, um, she sprained, very badly sprained her foot, and it is still swollen and awful. And of course, it's the foot she needs to drive. So just pray for her that the Lord will heal her completely. Uh, she needs she needs sleep at nighttime for sure. So if y'all will just keep them in prayer. In the meantime, we know that the Spirit of the Lord has an appointment for each one of us here. And so let's just pray and ask God that he will move in this house today. And um, we're going to start with Psalm chapter 91. Would you stand with me? For the reading of the word, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. So thankful that Psalm 91 is greater than COVID-19. Amen. And that's what we believe and that's what we will trust in and that's what we will put our hope in, the blood of Jesus. I'm so thankful today to have some guests this morning, Pastor Nathan and, and Christy and their family. Um, he, he is actually the son of a pastor in Pawpaw, West Virginia, Earl Travis, that when I was a kid, we would travel to their church and dad would preach for his dad and minister. And so it's so cool to see this all come full circle. And now he's a pastor and, um, and to be able to just be colleagues in ministry and see how the Lord is moving. And, and I had an incredible honor to be a part of their uh, youth camp. And, um, and a youth rally that they did also. And I can tell you the spirit is moving where they are. And it's powerful and beautiful. And it's just an honor to, for them to be here this morning. So um, we usually do a whole meet and greet and thing, but we're trying not to do that these days. But make sure you wave at them and, and tell them that it's good to see them <laughs> and all those things. But we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's welcome his presence. I believe God wants to breathe on us today, and let's just ask him to do that. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful and grateful and just, just so humbled and honored to be in your house today. God, there is no one like you. And Lord Jesus, right now, we just ask that you would come, that you would move, that you would do what only you can do in this house. Lord, we pray that you would light us on fire, that you would set us ablaze, that we would burn for you and you alone. Lord, we ask you, oh God, that you would just move and minister in this place. Lord, we ask you that you would fill this house with the breath of God. Lord, we pray that you would breathe on us and we would be filled with the Holy Ghost and, and power. Lord, we ask you, Jesus, that you would just come and that you would make yourself real and alive in each heart. Lord, we pray that you would heal, that you would restore, that you would fix things that are broken, God, that you would do what only you can do. Lord, we pray let the healer be loosed over every person in this room and over our congregation, over our pastor and my mom. Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, and 
Raise them up, Jesus. Let the Spirit of the Lord just kiss them right where they are, God. And Lord, today, we thank you for America. We thank you for this nation, and we make it known that we stand with the nation of Israel. We bless your people right now, God. We thank you, Jesus, that you are moving and that you are doing great and mighty things and that revival is on the landscape and on the horizon, God. We trust you to believe and believe you, Lord, that, that, that those, th those th things seem impossible and dark. Lord, that this is when you shine best. And so we say, oh God, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In the name of Jesus, we say, let your glory fall. Let your glory fall over this land, oh God. Would you heal this nation, God? Lord, would you move in such a powerful way? And Lord, we pray and ask that you would do the impossible things. Lord, we lift up to you our president today. We know that it's his birthday and we pray that you would minister to him, Jesus, that you would anoint him and touch him, God, and that you would draw him ever closer to you as he leads this nation. And God, we ask you, oh Lord, that you would touch and that you would move powerfully. And we bless you and we honor you and we praise you and we worship you. Come on, church, let's not be quiet today. Let's just lift up his name. Lord, we need you today. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy.
Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How you doing? What? I didn't hear you. I'm hard of hearing. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All right? Now, remember, this is only a foretaste of what the end times are really going to be like. And I guarantee you, the way the country's going, churches may be shut down. And you won't have the opportunity to gather together and rejoice together. So we got to make the best of it while we can. Right? All right. You may be seated. We're going to take up our offering now if the ushers come down. You know, it's amazing what's going on. But it's amazing that God's still moving, moving greatly it all around. Sales of Bibles, God skyrocketed. Everybody's wondering what's going on, what's going on. You know what? We don't have any fear. We know what's happening. We know what's going, what the end of the book says, too. And we know where we're going to be after it's all over. Amen? Today is Flag Day, okay? So what we're going to do is run a little video during the offering about flags. Do you think that's a good idea? All right. So right now, Heavenly Father, we're going to take up the offering, so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all you do for us. We have anticipation of what you're going to bring to us today, Lord Jesus. I don't know how you do it, Lord, but I know one person preaching one message can touch every person in the room, whether it's 100 or 5,000. So right now, Heavenly Father, we just open our hearts and our minds to you to hear your word coming forth to us today, Lord. So right now, Heavenly Father, I just ask you to move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus the Messiah, you're the hope of all the world. By your grace I live to breathe and worship you. Shall be 
Lift him up. declare our desperation for you this morning. We've got to have you, Lord. 
We've got to have your presence. We've got to have your breath. Lord, we just pray that you would move in and throughout this room today, God, that you would do what only you can do. Lord, we just lift up this, this day. Lord, everything that it entails, Lord, let your glory just kiss this place. Lord, challenge our hearts today and change us. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, only your words, not mine. God, only your words, not mine. God, let the spirit of the Lord move. And we pray for divine utterance. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm so thankful for our worship team. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be able to be here and just um, declare the word of the Lord. I'm thankful for this house and uh, the vision of this house and the, the purpose of this house. We know that we are not a normal church. <laughs> we've, we've, we've figured that one out. So thank you, Jesus. Uh, I just want to thank God for my parents and for who they are and for the, the upbringing that they, um, that they instilled into my sister and I. And I'm thankful that they lived and were an example of the word of the Lord to us. And this morning, obviously, this is a bit of a surprise, so I'm kind of um, back and forth between two words, and I hope I can intermingle it and, uh, and deliver it to you. And may the Holy Spirit give me help. So I was, I, I've been thinking along these lines, and um, I understand that right now in America, we are in um, a crisis. I understand that we can turn on the news and, and there is such a spirit of division and it's very divisive and this is what the enemy wants. He wants to do this. Um, I will tell you that I, I understand that there has been injustice. I understand that there is a lot of things wrong. I understand that. I get it. I, I also understand that there is a supernatural uh, underlayment to all of these things, okay? And um, uh, in September, it's funny that we had, do you guys remember the prayer revival we had in September? It actually ended on September 29th, which was the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. And I've spoken some of these things before, so just, um, just want to refresh your memory for the sake of this. The Jewish New Year started September uh, 29th, 2019, unlike us, we start our calendar January 1st, 2020, right? The Jewish New Year 5780, that um, it, it actually, uh, it, with Jewish numbers, they actually also represent a picture. And it's just kind of different the way that their alphabet is and the way that they have numbers and, and pictures that intertwine. And, um, and so they have, I guess, um, 80, that 5780, that, that word right there, uh, that number represents the picture of a mouth. And it represents the roar. It, it represents the word. It represents breath. It represents all of these things that have to do with your mouth. And um, I was thinking along these lines, and since then it's been confirmed over and over again just through different things that I've read and and, and been um, just, you know, in circles with and people speaking to. And I think it's wild that where the Jewish New Year 5780, it, it, was, it was told and declared that it's the year of the mouth. Then we fast forward to January 1st, 2020, everyone, I don't, probably all over the world, secular and Christian, we started to talk about vision, right? Because if you have 2020 vision, you're seeing clearly. And this church, we, we had talked about this theme for a long time before 2020 ever hit to see him more clearly. And, um, and so we talked about vision and we talked about all those things and, and we started to marry the year of the mouth with the year of vision, with seeing clearly. And we started talking about how sometimes we need to say out of our mouth what we want to see, right? You declare the vision. It hasn't yet come to pass, but we are believing and we're speaking it forth. Romans tells us um, that we call those things that are not as though they were, right? And, and the spirit of, of God, it's, it's, a, it's amazing that the words that we speak, we started talking about blessing and the power of blessing and that we need to bless one another and watch our words that we don't curse, that we're blessing. We started to bless this house. We started to bless our families. We encourage 
encourage us to to have a blessing that we would speak maybe um, in prayer over this year and over our day, right? I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you with every spiritual blessing, right? I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. And to watch how we are, are saying our words, that we're being careful what we say because eventually what we say we're gonna see. And so, um, and, and this even comes with, with singing and worship. Why do we do this? Why do we sing? Why do we worship? Why do we do these things? Sometimes we sing it before we see it, right? Sometimes we're singing about a move of God before we see a move of God. Just when we were singing, the name of Jesus is lifted high. During practice this morning, I felt the, the, the spirit of the Lord come upon me, and I just started to say, you know what? When we, start, when we sang that, your sons and daughters were prophesied. And it just came up in me. Natalie and Ellie will prophesy in this place. Natalie and Ellie, just put your kids' names in there, right? Just begin to say, Vinny and Chloe will prophesy in this place. Dominic will prophesy in this place, right? Hadley, Silas, Oakley, you know, all of these. We need to pray that we will see, we will see it happen, right? We begin to ask the Lord to give us what we say, that we'll have a vision for something and we'll be able to see it happening. So then you fast forward a little bit more. And, and we, we were able to, I can't remember the exact date, but probably around the second week of February, our president gave forth a State of the Union address. You guys remember that? That seems like it was 20 years ago, okay? Um, 2020 has been long. Um, so so it's, it's wild when we think about this, right? This, the president gave us uh, the State of the Union address, which was the State of the Union, and then a vision was laid out of what he wanted to see happen, right? He talked about Space Force. We saw this all um, come to fruition just a few weeks ago, right? The, the launch and all those things, a flag, a, an emblem, a, a new arm of the military, um, all of these things, right? Um, this was all talked about. It was, it was said, right? It was said. Then we watched, and, and obviously, whatever party you're from, God bless you, um, and, and, and may you see um, clearly the, the spiritual uh, impact of these things. But uh, I was just thinking about this. In fact, um, early, early in the morning, and uh, our, our fire alarm started chirping. We needed to change our batteries, and it was awful. But I was like, there's an alarm. Maybe I need to get up and, and pray and think about, you know, something. I don't know. I'm not, I don't like to give up sleep, y'all. I'm not that super spiritual. I still need sleep. But I just felt like I needed to. And in my mind, I thought about all those things that our president spoke, the words that he spoke over this nation. And then we saw that speech get t torn right in front of our eyes, right? On, on live TV, we saw, and it was, like, it, it was like an unleashing of an agenda that said we will tear down everything that was said, right? We will not let that vision come to fruition. We, we won't let it. And so then you fast forward not even a month later, and we're all getting like coronavirus like updates, like uh, out the wazoo, right? We are hearing this virus, 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 you know, all this stuff. And, and it's just like, it's wild how quickly everything just screeched to a halt and shut down. And the beauty of it is, is that whatever the enemy does, it doesn't take God by surprise. He can always turn it for good, right? And so um, a lot of times, like, I, I don't know about you, but, but it was uh, irritating, <laughs> to say the least. But it pushed the church outside, and we were able to have drive-in church. And I remember, and I'll not forget, these little hands hanging over the fence over here that, that I don't think we've ever seen them walk in these doors, but they heard. I saw little hands trying to peek over the fence. And you don't know what kind of word was put out into the atmosphere. You have no idea those, those, those days that we were out there in the cold with the wind blowing and our papers blowing everywhere. All those things. We don't know what the Spirit of the Lord carried on the airwaves into the atmosphere. Our words, right? The power of words. The year of the mouth. And so you, you think about all those things, and, 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 and what did the coronavirus, what did COVID-19, what was the, the biggest attack when you think about what the symptoms were? It was on your breath, right? 
That was the biggest mark. Most people complained when they would when they would come down with this virus that it was against their breath, right? That they they and it would sometimes like mimic the signs of pneumonia, or it would cause them to go into pneumonia. And this is just I'm not not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I don't claim to be one, but this is just what was put out there by plenty of people that had it. And so they talked about how how they struggled to breathe, right? So then, fast forward a little bit more, we start to come out of quarantine, but what does our governor do? And governors all over, and and plenty of states, they start to issue a mask order. What does that cover? Your mouth. And then what happens? Your mouth is muffled. It's hard. Have you, have you guys like, like you try to speak to someone, you're like, what? Say that again. Excuse me. What? I mean, I don't think I need a hearing aid, but what? Right? And whether or not you want to wear a mask or don't want to wear a mask, that's completely up to you. Let freedom ring. Whatever you want to do, you know, what do. But, but here's the thing. Um, it's funny how that order was placed and and how and I've spoken to some people you know we've gone into um, some businesses restaurants or whatever and they're required to wear those and and I, I was talking to this one chick and she was trying to help me out with some pizza and she was like oh my goodness like it's so hard to breathe and I was like I feel so sorry for you I'm sorry you know I only have to wear it to come in to pick up my pizza and, and walk out but but she's there and she's like, yeah, every 30 minutes I have to go outside and just take it off and breathe because I'll start hyperventilating. And I'm like, yeah, that's not good. Another attack on your breath. Then you fast forward a little bit. And this is amazing because it's, this is this culmination of all of these things. I know you guys know all this stuff. Then we watch on the news as the video is released of this man named George Floyd who his very last words are, I can't breathe, right? So then it starts to um, become a hashtag, I can't breathe. This, this man was arrested and he was thrown to the ground and, and an officer puts his, his knee on his neck and all these things are starting to come out, you know, later that they knew each other, there was beef between them before, all these things. All, and, and, and here's the deal. There is nothing good about that in any way, shape, or form, right? You are not the arresting officer, the prosecutor, and the executioner all in the same day in eight minutes, right? That's not who you are. That's not what American justice is about. And and racism is wrong. It's it's not appropriate. God said, this is like, like, here's the thing. We will not repeat the rhetoric of the media because we know that they come from, from a voice that we don't need to hear. But we will repeat the, the word of the Lord that says every tribe, every tongue, and every nation has its place in the kingdom of heaven. That we are all equal. That God has given us all his, his most perfect sacrifice. No matter what color you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what home you live in, he has given us the beauty of the cross and he has, he has placed upon each and every person the same value which is the value of his son he bankrupted heaven for me and you that's the that's the bottom line right each and every one of us are not loved more or less by father god he loves us all with the same love that he poured out with, with giving us his son for god so loved the world the whole world. So we've got to we've got to speak and we need to to repeat the word of God, not the rhetoric of a media, right? Amen. And so 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 we see that happen and we 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 saw this horrible injustice that took place in our streets. And can I just tell you that there are, is testimony coming out and we just watched a little video clip of of preaching of worship that's happening on that same street corner and people are getting baptized all over the place right there god is moving and like i said whatever the enemy means for evil god can turn it around for good and so we see once again that it was an attack on the breath it was an attack on the breath. It was an attack on the mouth, the year of the mouth. Say what you want to see. We've got to keep on praying and pressing and believing God that he is going to move on this nation because when everything seems bleak, when everything seems impossible, what is that? It is the stage, when the stage is set for impossible, that is when God swoops in and he does his very best work. On Friday, it looked like Jesus Christ was crucified, dead, and buried. It looked like all hope was lost and it was over, right? But then Sunday showed up, right? Then Sunday showed up. So we might be right now in the middle. We might be on Saturday, right? Right now we might be on Saturday, but, but get ready, church, because we are about to see God move because he's the one. 
he's the one who specializes in resurrection power. He's the one that holds the breath in his hands. And when Jesus breathed his last, then suddenly the Holy Spirit came and breathed in him again. And the Bible says the stone was rolled away and that he came out of that tomb for me and you. Man, that has got to get you worked up. It gets me worked up. So I started thinking about this. I started thinking about about how it's clear that the devil has unleashed such a full-out attack on the mouth a full-out attack. It's just amazing to me. It's just so clear. And it's like, whoa. And so we start to see all of these things happen. And, 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 and you know, 2020 is only six months in to, to what's going to happen. But I believe that when the, when the enemy tried to breathe his nonsense, what does the Word of God tell us? That when the enemy comes in like a flood, then what is the answer? The Spirit of the Lord will r- lift up a standard against him. I'm ready to see the standard. Anybody? Anybody ready to see it? Guess what? Me and you are going to be part of that standard. We are the church, the body of Christ. So it's important that we breathe, that we we continue to speak. We continue to declare the word of the Lord. I want to encourage you, don't get sucked in. Listen, sometimes I just have to turn it off. Even social media, sometimes I just have to turn it off because it starts and then it starts to weigh you down and the more you read, you're like, Ugh. and then and then you just feel lower and lower. And it's like, no, get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. We need the word of the Lord. What is coming out of his mouth, not everybody else's mouth. We need the word of the Lord, the, the year of the mouth, the word of the Lord to come out. What is, what is the mouth of the Lord saying? So we see all of these things happening. Then we see that not only is, is all of this happening, but in the middle of it, then, then we see that the, that the enemy is trying to silence the church, right? Have we ever, ever expected that churches would be shut down and there would still be shut down? Like, there, there's still churches that are not operating in full capacity. There's still churches that are fighting with their, their ordinances and their cities and their states, and there's still churches that are fighting to be open. And the enemy is trying to keep them shut. He's trying to keep the word of the Lord from going out. But then we read reports that um, an online church is good. Like if you can't go to church, online church, hallelujah, hallelujah. But you know what? We need each other. We need to see each other in person and see this is an encouragement. This, This helps lift you up. But... But we see these reports that on Easter Sunday that there were more more um, hits on church services than on pornography. Oh, what? Like, that's incredible. Like, that is a miracle. That is a miracle, church, right? Huge. Oh, I got really excited about that. Um, and, and so... So we see these things like church is on lockdown. He's trying to keep us from, from praying, from declaring, from roaring, from decreeing, from doing the things that come out of our mouth. And, and then I remember Susan brought out that, that one of the, the guidelines was like everybody needs to wear masks or whatever. And then like especially when you sing. Well, well, do you think that the enemy doesn't want to hear worship, right? He wants to muffle the sound of the church. He wants to muffle the sound of worship. He doesn't want to hear a roar of worship because it reminds him of what he used to do. It reminds him of what he used to be, right? We cannot live without breath. We cannot live without breath. We see in Genesis when God formed Adam out of the dust of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and then man became a living being. We see in Acts chapter 2, we just celebrated the day of Pentecost, but I'm still on Pentecost, right? I'm still there. I'm parched there. I'm just going to be there for a while. Um, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Can I just give you, like, Stacy like, um, speculation on this verse? This is not in the Bible. This is not going to change your salvation, but I just wonder. It makes me wonder, as of a rushing mighty wind. What if that was the breath of God? Right? Oh, 
What if that was the breath of God breathing on that room? Like I said, it's your opinion, whatever you think. But there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house while they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What is utterance but speech, word, sound, declaration? It is it's not like a little like, um, oh, I don't know, it's just something muffled, something soft, something unintangible, no, or unintelligible. This is something that was a force. It was something that came out forcefully. This was not, you know, a, a child trying to say mama, dada. No, this was a divine utterance that came out of their mouth. I believe that's what God wants to do in you and I. He wants to give us a divine utterance. He wants to breathe his breath on you and I, and he wants to put in us a divine utterance that when we go and speak to someone, it's not Stacy's words, it's the word of the Lord. There's too much Stacy in Stacy's words. You can just ask Tony. There's too much, and there needs to be more Jesus in Stacy's words, right? We need the word of the Lord to be poured out. We need the word of the Lord. We need divine utterance. Wow. I believe that. And, and, and the reason why I think it was the breath of God is because you backtrack to John chapter 20. I forgot to insert this little point. In John chapter 20, verse 22, it says, And when he, meaning Jesus, had said this, he breathed on them. <laughs> and, they, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Ghost. That was Jesus. He breathed on them. I believe it was the breath of God, whatever y'all want to think. But God wants to fill our mouths with a holy prayer language, a sound that comes out of us that is in complete alignment with heaven. That's what happens when we begin to speak in tongues. We are in complete alignment with heaven. We are actually praying back to the Father. What the, what, see, Jesus is making intercession for us, right? We sang about this. He's ever interceding. He's, he's, he's praying for Jesus is praying for us. The words that are coming out of his mouth, then the Holy Spirit gives those words to us in a divine prayer language, and he's speaking it out of out of from God's mouth to our mouth, and he's coming out of us. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's so important. It's not a badge of honor to say, I've got something and you don't. No, this is something that says, man, God, I'm hungry for you, and I just want to say what you say. I don't want to say what I say anymore. I don't want human words and human wisdom. I'm done with it. I'm done with human solutions. If human solutions would have worked, then they would have worked a long time ago. I think we're smart enough to figure stuff out, right? If we can put all this stuff in a smartphone, then I'm pretty sure we could figure out how to fix the world. I'm pretty sure we could figure out how to solve some of these problems that have been going on since the dawn of creation, but we're not because it's not a human solution. It is a supernatural problem that needs a supernatural solution. And the supernatural that comes from darkness is not going to cut it. We need supernatural that's come from the that's going to come from the kingdom of heaven because only the creator can fix what has been put in us that that is completely messed up. Only the creator can fix us. Only heaven can fix us. Most of what we're hearing, the, the words that we're hearing today, most of it is not helping anything. In fact, most of it's hurting. Man, that's why we need the Holy Spirit to give us divine utterance. We need a word from heaven. I need to align my words with the kingdom of heaven. I need to align my words with this word. God, let your word come out of my mouth. I don't want to I don't want to let the word of the media come out of my mouth. I don't want the word of my next door neighbor to come out of my mouth, but I want the word of the Lord to come out of my mouth. Wow. Once again, if we want to refute all of the evil injustices and if we want, to, we want to declare it and we want to declare the word of the Lord over racism, this is another one, Acts 17, 26. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth. One blood, right? As Toby Mac and Mandisa would say, we all bleed the same, right? Yeah. So, so, so we need the breath of God. The breath of God breathed into Adam. I believe the breath of God breathed over the day of Pentecost and a divine utterance was given. But then you can go back to one of the most incredible passages of scripture in the Old Testament that I love, that I love, that I love. In Ezekiel chapter 37, you guys know where I'm going, right? Oh, God begins to speak to the prophet Ezekiel. I love this passage. 
And he says that the spirit of the Lord came upon him and carried him and brought him out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. I remember when I first started youth ministry, not here, a different church, we had this closed in pavilion. It had no insulation. It was, the walls were like this dark, dark gray. The carpet was black. Um, and it was just closed in, no insulation. We had a, a window unit in the side that we would try to start like hours before youth, but it would just be so hot in there in the summertime. Like if it was 90 degrees outside, it was probably 100 degrees inside <laughs> of that building. If it was 30 degrees outside, it was probably like 25 degrees inside of that building. But we had um, we had uh, this this just closed in pavilion, pavilion. But boy, did we have God! Like God moved in that room like so much. And and it, this was what was so awesome because adults would have been like, "Oh my goodness, it's so hot!" But these young people didn't care. And so, um, except for this night, except for this night, when I decided to preach on. Um, on the bones of, a, of Ezekiel, Ezekiel's dry bones. So I've told you guys this story before. I'll hurry up. Um, we had two young people in our youth ministry, Joseph and Jerry, who, um, <laughs> who worked at a buffalo farm. And I was talking to them about it, and they are like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a buffalo farm, blah, 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 you know. And, and they would just talk about it a lot. Like, they do all this stuff, and they would make the sound for the buffalo that they had to do, like, like all this stuff, and they had to wave. And I mean, buffalo are huge, right? So... Um, and it's like bison burger, like all this stuff like comes out of this, right? And so um, they were talking about it, and my ears picked up on this one detail that they said there's buffalo bones everywhere. So I was like, cool, the valley of dry bones. So it's like, Joseph, Jerry, bring me some buffalo bones, okay? <laughs> bring me some buffalo. I need a lot of buffalo bones. Y'all think this is creepy, right? But this is from the word, right? So um, anyway, like you got to keep kids engaged, right? You got to keep them excited about the word of the Lord. So um, I know it wasn't wisdom. I understand. I get it now. Like I was young. And so they brought bones, like all, oh, like they backed up some bones into this place, buffalo bones, right? So they bring it in. We set it all over the youth sanctuary. And, um, <clears throat> and like, we're like, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Turn on the air condition, shut the door. It's dead heat of summer, probably July, August. And, um, and it's time for you to start. We go down there and open the door, and the smell of death <laughs> is so strong. <laughs> like, these bones were not dry bones, okay? Um, like, they looked dry, but they weren't because evidently there was still some meat somewhere, marrow somewhere, something. And we were, like, almost knocked over. But I'm like, we're going to go for it, right? We did not remove the bones. We continued to preach the word of the Lord. <laughs> and I was like, and God said Ezekiel in the middle of all these bones. And we're like, oh, it's scary. It stinks, right? And these bones were very dry, right? There's skeletons over here. There's, like, like hip bones and and skull bones and whatever kind of bone. I don't even know. Some kind of leg bones, some kind of some ribs. There's all kinds of stuff in there. We had it scattered everywhere. I'm like, these bones, we're not skeleton bones. These bones had been picked apart, right? Like, this was a valley full of dry bones. These bones had been there for a very long time. These were not put together skeletons. These were, there's a skull over here and a hip bone over here and a leg over there and an arm over there and some pinky over there and some toe over there. And there's bones all over the place. But the animals had come and, and, the, and the birds had pecked. And, and all of these, they had been pulled apart. These bones had been bleached in the sun. The weather had been on it, the wind, the rain, all of these things. And it was a valley full of scattered dry bones. And God set Ezekiel in them. And he said, oh, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I feel like that's what he's saying to this generation. We look around, and there's not even a skeleton. There's not even something we can follow and say, that's what that looks like. That's what that's supposed to be. I could kind of imagine if it had some skin or if it had some hair or if it had something on it, what it would look like. But we have a young people. We have a culture that has no idea who God is. They have no idea what church is. They have no idea what it means to come into the house of God and understand how to act and how to sit and how to be here. Yeah. They've been picked apart by the animals of this culture, by the birds of the air that comes to steal anything good. They've been picked apart and scattered all over the place. It's impossible, right? It's impossible. These bones are all over the place. And, and, and Ezekiel is so smart. I would have been like, God, no way can these 
Lord, you know. Can I tell you, God knows what to do with America. God knows what to do with a broken generation that's angry, angry and bitter and upset and and lonely and so full of, of an orphan spirit because they don't know what it means to be loved and they don't know what it means to have this a father that will not just love them but correct them. Wow, that's, that's something that we, like, it, it's just, like, it's so, like, separated in us. That love is actually correction. Like, we don't get that. We, we want to love, but we don't want to tell anybody no. But no is some of the best words we could hear sometimes. Because if we're left to our own devices, we're just going to self-destruct. We need someone to come and, and intervene and say, no, no. I had a young person sit in front of me with tears streaming down her face one time, and she said, Stacy, why won't my parents tell me no? They know what I'm into. They know what I'm involved with. They know what I go to when I leave the house. Why won't they tell me no? Uh, I didn't know what to say. I just sat there and wept, and I thought to myself, okay, when I become a parent, if I ever do become a parent, let me remember this forever. No means love sometimes. So the spirit of the Lord asked the prophet, can these bones live? And he answered, oh Lord, you know. So he said to him again, he said in verse four, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You might look like a nut in your house standing in front of your kid's bedroom door and speaking over them, you will live. You will live. You might feel like you're speaking to an inanimate, an, an inanimate object when you're looking at a door or when you're looking at a bed or lo- when you're looking at a room that doesn't have a body in it, but you are declaring over that room. You are declaring, just like we declared over this place, right? Every seat filled in the name of Jesus. We bless this place to be filled. We bless this parking lot to be filled. We bless the the youth sanctuary, right? We pray this all the time. Every empty chair in the name of Jesus. And and to, to the outside world, we probably look like a bunch of idiots, right? But we're prophesying. We are declaring it's our mouth is being used. Our mouth is being activated to agree with the word of the Lord. I'm not gonna agree with what my eyes see. I'm not going to agree with what my eyes see. My eyes see emptiness and brokenness. But my spiritual eyes, the vision that God has given me, see something totally different than what my natural eyes see. And so therefore, I'm going to speak with my spiritual eyes. Let me open my other eyes. And so he says, prophesy to the bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Bones don't have ears. Ears have bones. That's what Caitlin said. Ha <laughs> ha. It was true. But bones don't have ears. He was telling Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones to hear the word of the Lord. If we can prophesy to bones, then that tells me that we can prophesy to anything. You really want to get stirred up? You can prophesy to your checkbook. Hallelujah! Right? We get really excited about those things. But what about you can prophesy You can prophesy. You can prophesy to anything. You can prophesy to your workplace. When you pull up, in the name of Jesus, every person in this this workplace will be saved. In the name of Jesus, you can prophesy. You can prophesy. My sons and my daughters will prophesy. My sons and my daughters shall be saved. You can prophesy. Go against what your natural eyes say. See and say the opposite and believe God. The spirit of rebellion will be turned around into such a spirit of beautiful, holy stubbornness where they will sink their heels into the word of God and they won't budge and they won't move and there will be concrete poured into their spirits where nothing in this world would ever move them or shake them from the presence of God. Man, we can say something and believe it. And so God says, In verse 5, thus says the Lord God to these bones. What does it say? Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Wait a minute. They're just bones. They're just bones. But God says I'm going to cause breath. 
He said, that's the first thing, right? Then he says, I'm going to put sinews on you and flesh. I would have, like, switched it around. I would have said, like, I'm going to give you skin. I'm going to give you muscles. I'm going to give you a body. I'm going to, like, raise you up and then put breath, right? No, he said, I'm going to put breath. He said, look, I'm going to breathe on this. I'm going to do something that you can't even believe. I'm going to put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and, it shall, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. <coughs> Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, here we go, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, <clears throat> and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army." Wow, what a story. What an incredible picture of what God wants to do. An end time army that will be raised up by the power and the breath of God because God wants to breathe on a generation. I was thinking about this, just thinking, God, you need to raise up an army. This generation is broken, scattered, dead, dry been picked apart by the demons of hell, animals of culture. But when we see dry bones, he sees an army. When we see something completely dead and broken, he sees an army. An army is not just a mob or a group of people. An army is a disciplined force with purpose. With purpose. An army has, has a, a battle cry. An army has a reason to be there. An army isn't just a crowd. It's not just a bunch of people in a place. No, this is disciplined warriors in a rank, ready to hear commands of the Lord. And for a generation that is completely lawless, I believe God wants to come and breathe. And when he does, he's going to put together something so beautiful that moves in such unity, that moves with such an, an obedience to the commands of the Lord. That blows my mind. That is mind-blowing in and of itself. So this morning, I just want to encourage you, don't let the enemy take away your breath. Don't let the enemy... Man, the attack has been there. Don't agree with it. Don't agree with it. Don't, don't agree with what the enemy wants to do. He wants to destroy the voice. He wants to take away the voice. He wants to take away our breath. He wants to remove the word of the Lord from our mouth, muffle it, make it to where it can't come out clearly. But we need to continue to pray. We need to continue to press in. We need to continue to believe God. I believe he's going to do it. I believe he's going to do it. One more thing and then I'm done. In Luke chapter 24, I love this story. Jesus has been crucified. He's been buried. And early that morning, his disciples came to the tomb. Mary, actually, the, the women, came to the tomb. And they discovered that the stone was rolled away. An angel speaks to them and says, he's not here, he's risen. So they go and they tell all the disciples who are shut up in a room, right? So some of the disciples run to the tomb and they see that it's empty. And, and this is like incredible, but they don't quite understand what's happening. They can't quite get it. And that's my prayer. God, help me to understand what I can't, what I can't quite get, what, what's happening, what I can't see. Help me to see it, right? Well, everything that's happening, Lord, help me to, to really grasp what's really going on. Like, I see what's going on, but let me see what's really going on. 
And it says that there was two of them traveling on the same day to Emmaus, right? We know this, the road called, the road called Emmaus. And they're traveling, and it was seven miles from Jerusalem. They're walking away from everything that happened, the crucifixion, everything that happened. And it says in verse 15, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Well, well, isn't that what the enemy is trying to do? He's trying to destroy our vision. He's trying to cover up our eyes so that we can't see and we can't really understand clearly what's happening. And so that we are just so caught up with what's going over on over here that we can't see the bigger picture, that we can't see who it is that's right in front of us, that we can't see that Jesus is actually with us. We're broken hearted. We think he's gone. We don't think he's here anymore, but he's actually with us. He's actually traveling with us. And it says, and, and Jesus speaks to them. He says, what kind of conversation is it that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Jesus is asking them. And they look back at him and they were like, are you the only stranger in, a, in Jerusalem? Have you not heard the things which are happening? Like, have you been under a rock? Do you not know what's happening in the world right now? Have you not been listening to the news? And they say, and he says to them, what things? Don't you love Jesus? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth. And they're speaking to Jesus. And they're like, have you not heard the things that were spoken about Jesus? Look, the enemy is going to say a whole bunch of stuff about Jesus. But it's not true. He's alive. He's living. He's well. And if you would just let the Lord open your eyes, he's with you. Right in this room. He's with you. He's talking to you, even when you can't see him. And they're like, well, well, did you not see? Did you not know? And he's like, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet, mighty indeed, and in the word of God, and how the chief priests, and they go through the whole thing, that he was tried, and he was crucified. And it says, but, but we hoped that he was the answer, in verse 21. We were hoping that he, he was going to be the one who was going to redeem Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early, they astonished us when they did not find his body. And they came saying that they have also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And yet they're sad when they're talking about this. Jesus said, why are you sad? Right? And so they were saying, but we were hoping. Look, look, all of our hopes are good. Look, don't move away from hope. We've talked about that. You've got to live in hope. Hope helps, helps you have faith. But our hope needs to be rooted in what God wants to do. They thought that Jesus was going to come and do something their way. But he had a different way. He had his way. Right? And so they're like, they're like oh, well, we were hoping that he was going to redeem us. Guess what? He was. He did. That's what the cross was for. So Jesus listens to them and he hears all this. And then it says that he goes all the way back to the beginning of Moses and the prophets. And he just begins to declare the scripture to them. So he starts to teach them as they walk. I love that. He's explaining things to them. He's talking to them. But then we get to this part. And I love this. Then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone further, but they constrained him and they said, abide with us for it's towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. <clears throat> so they invited him to dinner. And so he comes in and it says, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from, his, from their sight. Then their eyes were open. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I read the word, I need it broken down for me. But this is the bread right here. This is our daily bread. We sang about it. This is our daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Oh, sometimes... We just need the spirit of the Lord to come and break the bread so we can understand and our eyes can be opened 
and we can know, oh, this is what, you've been with me this whole time. You already had a, a plan. You already had a whole, a whole vision worked out for my life. They were known to him in the breaking of the bread. He was known to them in the breaking of the bread. It wasn't until he broke the bread. He talked about the law. He talked about the Moses and the prophets and everything, but they didn't get it until he, the, he broke the bread in front of them. He, they didn't get it until they actually saw the Son of God and the Son of Man sitting in front of them, and he broke the bread. It was something so familiar. That's what he wants to do with you and me. That's why we've got to get into the Word. We have to get into the Word. If we want to see clearly, if we want to have vision for the future, if we want to know all the stuff that's going on over here, but what does it really mean? What's the bigger picture? We've got to know the Word. We have got to let him break the bread in front of us so that our eyes can be open and we can truly see. It is the year of the mouth and the year of vision. Let our mouth speak what we want to see happen, what the Lord wants to see happen. And don't let the devil restrain your eyes and don't let the devil restrain your mouth. And be careful that we are speaking the word of the Lord and not anybody else's word. And be careful that we are in the word of the Lord so that our eyes will be opened and we will know him. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you so much. I thank you so much for your power, oh God. I thank you so much for your presence, oh God. I thank you so much for what you're doing in us and through us. God, I thank you that you want to make yourself known to us. Lord, that you desire to reveal yourself to us. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would begin to break the bread. Lord, the scriptures, the word, as we read it, that we would understand and, and know fully what it is that you want to say to us, God, what it is that we need to see. God, I pray, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would give us the strength to not speak everybody else's words but that we would speak the word of the Lord over our family, over our situations, over America, over this nation. God, I pray in Jesus' name that we would understand and realize the attacks of the enemy against our mouth and against our eyes, against what we are declaring and what we should be roaring in the spirit about and what we, we, what we need vision for. In Jesus' name. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands with me. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare over this room today. I declare over this room today. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you will come and that you will breathe on each and every person in this room. I pray that you would breathe on our walk. That you would breathe on our walk. Lord, this, these men on the road to Emmaus, after you disappeared from them, they said, didn't our hearts burn while he was talking to us? Didn't our hearts burn? It burned. Lord, I pray that as we read your word, as we fellowship with your word, as we get your word in us, that our hearts would burn. Our hearts would burn. And Lord, as you break the bread before us, we would know it's you. And that you're going to move and that you're going to touch us, God. Lord, we speak. We speak over our dead, dry, broken generation, a valley of bones. We speak over a dead America. Lord, we speak over, we speak over bones, Lord, that have filled this land. And we declare and we prophesy and we say, hear, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that you would come and we declare and we say, oh, oh, come from the four winds. Come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Oh, Holy Spirit, breathe upon these bones that they may live and become an exceedingly great army. In Jesus' name, breathe upon a broken nation. Holy Spirit, breathe. Breathe. Let us give you room to breathe, Jesus. Let us allow you to breathe. Come on. Lord, we need to get to the place in our spiritual walk with Jesus that will let him breathe on us. 
Give him time to breathe on you. He wants to breathe on you. He wants to breathe on your family. He wants to fill your children with the Holy Ghost and fire. He wants to. Are we desperate? Are we desperate for him to come? Are we desperate for him to move? Are we desperate to see something different? I am. I want to see something different. I want to open my other eyes. I want a vision that comes from heaven. In Jesus' name, Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that you will begin to put things together, that you would begin to put things together right before our very eyes, that you'll begin to put skin on it, muscles on it, that you'll begin to put it together, and that you'll begin to breathe on it. And Lord, right in front of us will become an exceedingly great army. Fill this church. Fill this church. Where we see empty, you see full. In the name of Jesus, where we see broken and dying, you see life and living and resurrection power. God, I pray, breathe upon this house. Breathe upon every person here, God. There is nothing better than you. God, there is nothing greater than you. Lord, I just pray, give us eyes to see and give us a mouth to declare. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I pray a blessing over this this house today. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, bless us as we go in and as we go out. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless us with the same blessing you blessed Isaac with, that you would give us a hundredfold of every seed that we sow, even in a time of famine, even in a time of brokenness and, and where things are locked down. In Jesus' name, that you will give us a hundredfold. Lord, a hundredfold increase. And Lord, that you would cause us to prosper, continue to prosper until we become very prosperous. That the Lord would give us increase more and more over us and our children. I pray in Jesus' name where the enemy tries to stop up the wells. In the name of Jesus, give us the strength to redig the wells. Give us the strength to redig the wells of revival. Give us the strength to redig. Lord, let us get out here, Lord, in the spirit. And let us dig ditches that you can fill with water. In the name of Jesus, we want to be well watered. Lord, we want to be connected connected to the source. Oh God, give us the strength, Lord. Let us be planted in you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I bless this house. I bless everyone here. I ask you to fill us up with your glory. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen. Amen. God bless you. Would you please come back tonight if you can and just pray for our pastor and, and my mom and just ask that the Lord will minister to them and heal them. Thank you all for, for coming and being a part. You have no idea what a blessing you are and how much we love you guys.